everyone and welcome to this Video Psalm Frontier video. My name is Jay Wakefield. Today we're going to be taking a look at a computer that um, I've not actually shown on this channel um, or indeed on YouTube at all, not that I have any other channels, um, for quite a while. Um, but uh, in the time that I've had this computer I would say that it's rather grown on me. The machine that um, I'm talking about is, of course, the uh, Packard Bell Legend Multimedia. Now, when I bought this in the summer of last year, it was um, it was bought as a 48E6 SX33 with 4 megs of RAM and no hard disk. <clears throat> Originally, I uh, equipped it with a 210 megabyte Connor hard disk. Um, but as time went by, you know, I upgraded a few parts. The CD-ROM drive needed replacing with one that actually, um, worked. That <laughs> could actually get working. Um, the hard drive was replaced with a Star a StarTech CF card to IDE adapter. Uh, the one that actually, um, uses one of the, uh, PCI blanking plates. Sorry, expansion... Uh, blanking plates. This is not PCI at all, this is all ISA. Um, and I uh, had a 1 gig card in it, but uh, I then upgraded to a 2 gig card um, using OnTrack's disk overlay software to actually make it work with this machine. Um, thank you to uh, Matthew816 for kind of, oops, sorry about that, telling me about that software. <clears throat> also, um, the CD-ROM drive was replaced a couple of times, once with a CD writer, uh, which didn't really seem to uh, work too well, so I put in this Creative 52-speed CD-ROM drive. Again, this has issues, but the drive works. It just sometimes, um, you know, it'll take a while to read sometimes. Sometimes it'll speed up way too much, then make a loud clunking sound, and then start reading slower. Um, sometimes the tray just will not come in, uh, you know, close. Um, even if I'm pressing the eject button, it, I don't know, something, um, yeah, the tray doesn't always go in. You, you kind of hear the motor struggling, but nothing. And then you have to kind of push it in manually. But, that aside, the machine does seem to work quite well. Um, another thing, the CMOS battery doesn't hold any charge. And there's a good reason for that. Um, when I got this machine... I yanked the battle battery from the motherboard. I didn't wish to have any corrosion on the board and the battery did actually have um, just a tiny bit of corrosion on it. Uh, didn't really do anything to the motherboard, I don't believe. Um, <clears throat> everything else seems to be working absolutely fine. Um, but, you know, I... I <sighs> I didn't want to actually damage a machine, so I pulled that battery out. Not had a chance to get myself a battery holder yet, but I would like to at some point. You know, I'd like the idea of uh, this actually working properly. Um, you know, being able to tell the time. However, um, unlike the 20 CD, um, this system will actually function without a CMOS battery. All you really have to do is go into the CMOS setup and literally save the settings. That's all you have to do. Um, but yeah. Without any further ado. I think it's time we switch this on. <laughs> you just kind of love that speaker. Oh. Yeah, might be an idea if I... Switched on the monitor. Ah, stuck key, did I? have something leaning on the keyboard. Right. Now, I left this machine plugged in. That's why it's um, working now. However, if I'd have actually un unplugged it from the wall, it would now be saying, um, you know, disk zero error. Um, all I'd need to do then is go into the CMOS setup and press... 
escape and then F4 to save the settings. Wouldn't actually need to set anything. However, what we have here is a menu. Now, this was one of the features of DOS 6. You might have seen a menu similar to this if you've, if you've ever used a Windows 98 CD or Windows, Windows ME CD or a Windows 98 or ME boot disk. One of the many touted features of MS-DOS 6.x, you could actually have different configurations selectable in a menu. Um, <clears throat> and I guess in a way it's kind of like the hardware profiles in Windows 95, 98, ME and versions of Windows, yeah. Now, what this menu, I've, I've actually created this menu so that it's got a few different modes uh, to play different types of games or what have you. First one, of course, is Microsoft Windows. That's what it says on the tin. It boots the computer straight into Windows. You know, kind of typical Packard Bell setup. Um, <clears throat> I use the uh, American 1994-95 software pack on this machine. I did try the European software pack, but I actually preferred the American one. Go figure. Um, DOS gaming with CD-ROM support. Basically just kind of sets up a DOS environment. Um, you know, and load to CD-ROM drivers. DOS gaming with no CD-ROM support. Basically just, you know, for older DOS games um, that don't need to have a CD loaded. You know, so that'll kind of free up some memory. Uh, minimal DOS setup with mouse support. So basically, it literally loads the high memory area drivers, the sound card drivers, and the mouse. Um, and a minimal DOS setup is just basically high memory driver. Uh, High area memory uh, drivers and the sound card drivers, nothing else. So, first things first, let's go into Windows. Okay, sorry about that, folks. Um, <clears throat> it seems I'm having a couple te technical difficulties. See, I actually use my phone to record these videos. Um, can't necessarily afford, you know, a proper camcorder, even though I would like one. You know, I'd like something, you know, high definition, maybe a handy cam, something like that. At the moment, I can't actually afford one. Now, what seems to be happening is, um, I mean, I've recently updated my phone to Lollipop using the official Samsung, uh, Samsung ROM. And it's just now, it keeps saying, oh, um, you know, after a few minutes, oh, uh, you'll need to wait till your phone cools down. So I'm getting these short little videos and having a kind of pause halfway in between. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm not necessarily liking, liking that at all. Now, what have I done with this machine? First thing, you'll notice that I've uh, kind of modified the uh, Packard Bell uh, wall kind of face of technology wall wallpaper. And um, I've, um, I've put a cell tire on it in Photoshop. Very clever. Um, going to Program Manager, you see all these kind of icons for program groups. Sorry, still adjusting. Should have really done this before. Um, yeah. <clears throat> and I'm able to do this thanks to a wee program called Plugin. And um, I find that that's... Yes, you could argue it's taken away from the um, essence of Windows 3.1. But then again, so was a lot of the other shells that were in use. Norton Desktop. A lot of people, um, of course, um, kneel in front of the altar that is Chimera, um, which is a Windows 95-esque shell. I like plugin because it actually gives Windows 3.1 a couple of things that kind of help it along, you know, without taking too much from the essence. You've still got the program manager, but check this out. I've got this group here. Offers some productivity. And if you have a look, <clears throat> there's what looks like programs, but you'll notice that the names are actually um, encapsulated within parentheses. So, for example, if I go to Paint Shop Pro, it's actually opened up another group. What we have here, ladies and gentlemen, are nested groups. Absolutely brilliant. 
something that I think the programme manager really needs. And, you know, because I was a wee bit curious, I decided to um, install, you know, this old version of Lotus Smart Suite. Um, Ami Pro was um, the forerunner to Word Pro, but it's basically exactly the same. So, um, you know, you had... Um, there you go. Aerial. Let's have a look. Um, <laughs> so yeah that's uh, Lotus Smart Suite well there it went again <clears throat> now I've tried turning off internet everything well basically everything you know any background task that my phone is using I've tried turning it off and now Now we've got the screensaver. There you go. Very, very nice. Very, very nice. You, you might like that. Enough of that. Let's go back to what we were doing before. And let's have some fun with kid pics. Just because we can don't want to spend too long on this video because I don't want to have to be pausing every four minutes. Um, I don't know. Let's let's draw. Oops. Yikes! Let's draw a nice kind of hillside, and then. In the background, maybe we'll have a hill there. And now what we're going to do is we're going to... wonder why that all turned green. Phew. And then we're going to maybe kill something. No, I'm only kidding on. We're not going to be killing anything. Don't worry. Um, that's annoying. Um, because it seems to me that we've done, done all this properly, you know, it's, um, right, let's try this again, there we go, except it's the wrong shade of green. There we go. And then what we're going to try and do is... A tad, protect, a tad predictable, do you not think? Um, I really don't know. I mean, it doesn't appear to me that you can zoom in to even kind of find where the faults are with the fill. You kind of just have to, you know, apply more lines and then just kind of hope for the best. Hopefully. Yep. There we go. And now let's have some calming blue sky. And 
maybe let's I don't know let's see um, wow well I don't really know really do you know what let's have some clouds because we can do we, I think we can do quite what we can do cards <laughs> right Obviously, ah, this is, yep, I was hoping we could do this. Let's have a nice sunshine. Is this a low sun because it's winter? But it's kind of February, so it's, the sun will still be quite low. Um, let's have some clouds. Actually, that's not really a cloud. I think that's supposed to be a mountain range in the distance or something. There's your clouds. Uh-oh. And it seems to me that they do try and make the clouds, you know, quite random. About as random as they can, really. Oh, no. But... I think you have to kind of, it is a bit of trial and error really, trying to get, you know, the clouds that actually look, you know, even quasi-realistic can, and then, <laughs> then you, <laughs> a big tall pine tree, or a teeny tiny little palm tree, what is that, kind of like a Christmas tree that you dangle from your rear view mirror right enough? I. And I think these mountain ranges probably best kind of drawing them in. Uh oh. You know, before you, you know, if you've got an idea where you're going to put your ground, but yeah, kind of draw them in the background. Right. Okay. Then, um, because I don't feel like, you know, kind of dragging trees all over the place, I think what I'm going to do is just maybe, I don't know, we're going we're gonna to go for some um, kind of palm trees. But as you can see here, it's. Uh, very easy to make a wee forest. I guess the only limiting factor here is the speed of the processor. And I'll give you a hint, it's a 486. Alright. Let's make that forest just a wee bit more densely populated. Now I've got floating tree in the air syndrome, but never mind. We'll uh, we're gonna get over that. It's probably best to kind of, you know, do the upper trees first and then cover them with lower trees. So, we... so you know, basically something like that. Now it kind of looks like it's on the ground. Excellent. And well, let's let's have a nice wee house. You know, what about? Yes, that looks perfect. And then you've got, and then you've got a suburban house, kind of like country home somewhere where. I, ah, now this looks more like it. There you go. Just kind of have a few houses dotted around, and you know because it's uh, kind of a rural scene. What I think I want to do is, well, I want to put some vehicles, obviously, um, but the kind of vehicle I would like most of all for this scene, um, I can't seem to find it, and that is quite annoying. Um, so I'll just have to keep going around until it kind of shows itself, really, because, ah, here we go, um, pickup truck, here we go, so we've got a couple pickup trucks there you go quite a big pickup truck and I guess you know just for the fun of it we'll have a we'll have a flying pickup truck there you go and um, so yeah and then <laughs> kind of have a 
I'm gonna have a, a fire hydrant that's the side of that house. Let's let's have one of those. And I guess we could have I don't know. Yeah, let's 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 not actually. I mean, some of the stamps, obviously, you know, kind of meant for different kind of sizes. So, proportionally speaking, a lot of these stamps are just a pure nightmare. I mean, that's supposed to be a mouse. <laughs> so, yeah. Anyway, I think that looks like a nice picture. Um, I think I'm actually going to save that. Gonna call that country because uh, country is a little fact. Um, and then what I'm gonna do because I'm completely childish. <laughs> Woo! Uh oh. Oh. Oh no. Oh well. No, nope, don't want to save changes here. Excellent. So that's that's that done. There's Visual Basic, uh, Visio, which wasn't then a Microsoft product. Adobe Reader Two, um, games. Guess we could have um, a wee game of Ski Free, I guess. Right. Hint, I'm absolutely no good at this game. By the time I see a jump, it's usually too late. Or I end up doing something pathetic like this. Which I'm sure kind of loses your point. So, ugh. instead of going for the jump, I went for the blooming rocks. I went skiing once with school. Can't say I really cared too much for it. Because of that reason. <laughs> and that reason. I mean, I was very lucky to go skiing with school, I will be honest, and it was extremely heavily subsidised, and yes, I do very much appreciate it, and thank you very much for the experience of actually getting to ski on something other than a dry ski slope. Where did we go? The Cairngorms. The best place to do it. That's me, Luke. Yeah. And then you can keep going. I think someone actually had this game glitch out and had... And had two abominable snowmen actually following them. Which um, I thought was quite funny actually. I remember playing this. I remember installing this. Uh, Game from a friend's Packard Bell CD-ROM. Um, you know, I really quite... I really had lots of fun playing these games. Oh, jinx. I'm not doing too well. Look, you know, I, I'm, I'm terrible at this game. You know, hands up. I'm the first to admit it, you know. Straight into a tree. I mean, what do you expect? You daft yeti! Ugh. Is your head some? Oh well. Not installed the uh, full entertainment pack yet uh, because I'm a bit of an idiot. Um, Christmas for 93. Do you know what? We're going to be saving that for VSF Christmas. So um, stick around. Things just might get a wee bit interesting.
And then there's all sorts of pack and bell stuff. How about we don't worry about that and instead we play something from Humongous Entertainment because, um, well, I mean, the time is currently five past nine. I was hoping to get this video done by two o'clock this afternoon, but that wasn't exactly uh, to be. Um, so, yeah. Um, but, you know, part of the reason was I was kind of getting all sorts installed, um, including, you know, every humongous entertainment title I have uh, currently on a CD that works with Windows 3.1. I don't have a lot of the Freddy Fish games because, well, I'm a bit of an idiot, if I'm honest. Never played them. I just finished, um... I have just finished a Spy Fox, uh, Spy Fox, uh, trilogy though, and, uh, I've gotta be honest. Quite good. Quite good. Quite taxing, but still quite good. So I hope to have a review of that coming up soon, actually. Um, humongous. Have I started up the right game? Well, the drive's actually spinning up, so I'm guessing so. I love how this music sounds so kind of electronic. Good night, Kayla. Good night, Dad. Tomorrow. Tomorrow's my birthday. And Mom and Dad have a big surprise for me. Good night, Fatty Bear. You be good. <sighs> I love you, Fatty Bear. Hey, Disney, did you see that? I work to do before Kayla wakes up. I want to make her a big, beautiful birthday cake. Oh, will she ever be surprised? I'd better get busy, too. I've got a lot of decorating to do. I'm even going to make Kayla a happy birthday sign for her bulletin board. Oh, Gretchen, that sounds wonderful. I need to go to the kitchen and make Kayla's birthday cake. Daddy there, would you like some help making the birthday cake? Bye bye. Did you see that? Toys coming to life when nobody's looking? This game came out in 1993. Now, Toy Story, if I'm correct, came out in 1995, but I didn't get to see it until 96, but uh, we'll just kind of gloss over that. So, Disney, I believe you've got a lawsuit on your hands. Actually, no, you'd probably find a way to sue Humongous Entertainment. And when? So I'll just kind of play a couple seconds of this, and then we'll uh, move on. The music for this game is fantastic, but then again you've already all seen me play it. Hang on. Is this a way into the kitchen? Oh no, I'm going up the staircase. Oh crap, I can't get to the kitchen. Oh wait, I've got an end. <laughs> Oh, hey, Matilda Rabbit. I'm here to help with the cake. Oh, good. I need this milk for the cake. And it shrinks enough to fit in a teddy bear's uh, dungarees pocket. That's that's brilliant. That's that's magic. One stick of butter. I'll take that for the cake. How about Thanks. some... I need two of those for the cake. Yum. 
Johnny, jeez. You never know when I might need this. Has he, has he making a cheesecake? There are some things in my pocket I need for the cake. I should leave them on the counter. Well, that's absolutely fantastic. But, this is not a Fatty Bear review, so I'm going to remove the Fatty Bear CD-ROM. And, yeah, we'll, we'll play something. We'll, we'll do something different, maybe. I don't know. Um, <clears throat> yeah, now I have set up my uh, joystick for use in DOS, but I haven't set up my joystick for use in Windows. Um, while the camera is rolling, I might actually do that, because I'm a wee bit curious now. To see if joysticks are actually an option in this version of Windows. Um, keyboard printers international. ID mapper. Doesn't seem like they are. I think I might need a joystick driver. A Media Vision Thunderbolt. Oh well, <sighs> ports, nope, MIDI mapper, ODBC, blah 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 blah, international. Could do with setting all this to the UK actually. Yep. Oh well. There we go. Oh well. Right, what we're going to do now is we're actually going to do some gaming in DOS because, well, DOS gaming, let's be honest. So we'll do DOS gaming. Do you know what? I've been stupid. We will do CD ROM support. Now in the DOS mode, uh, because I set them up before I decided to attach a zip drive to this machine, the zip drivers aren't there. But that's maybe not necessarily a bad thing. Because I can always actually start up the drivers if I need them within DOS. To not have them there, I mean, this does what it says on the tent, DOS gaming. Zip drivers, zip drive drivers just take up memory. Right. So have a look at what I've got. Quite a bit. Um, don't seem to have Jazz Jackrabbit though. That is, um, I find that actually quite worrying. Actually do, because no Jazz. Seriously, what is this? Why do I not have Jazz? Why do I not have Jill? Do I have gel? No, why not? Might actually need um, the zip drive after all. <clears throat> so I've, um, I'm setting up the, um, the zip drive. So it's uh, just searching for a drive letter. Like I said, it's quite a hiatus. It seems to take a while. Don't understand why, but it does. <clears throat> but it finds a letter anyway. There we go. And it um, identifies what drive it is, which is nice. Um, drive letter E. And, well, I can't find either Jazz, Jackrabbit, or Tale of the Jungle on here. So, well, I'm just, uh, I guess I'm just going to have to get them. Okay, so I've went to my main computer, I've copied four games to this zip disk, this 100 megabyte zip disk. 
Um, the game's total 28.8 megs in size. Took quite a while to copy. Uh, but what we're going to do is copy the inter the uh, full 28 megs from this zip disk to this to the Packard Bell using the blue parallel port zip drive that I used to have hooked up to the Compact Presario 2240. That is doesn't sound like much if you're used to USB flash drives. But I've got to tell you, parallel the um, IEEE 12084 parallel port standard is actually really quite slow. So let's have some entertainment then. What I'm going to do, CD to the games directory and I'm going to X copy E colon backslash, that's the letter of the zip drive. And hang on, star dot star, no spaces, forward slash E, um, and that's going to copy direct uh, subdirectories. So I'm going to press enter, and um, let's kind of time it. <clears throat> so it's currently half past nine now. So let's see what time it is when it finishes. In the meantime, I'm probably going to go and make a cup of tea. See now this is. I mean, even even my USB two zip drive on the uh, on my main machine wasn't exactly the quickest at copying the files over, and that's kind of that was kind of uh, the Achilles heel of zip disks. They were quite expensive in a pound per megabyte kind of way, and you know for what you got, and they were actually quite slow. But, for older machines, it is a form of mass storage, so I do use them. And I like the uh, auto-eject mechanisms these drives have, because it is fun! <laughs> well, I would say that that took about 10 minutes to copy. However, it is coming up to a quarter to 10 now. Um, the reason... I took so long in getting back to the computer in this video is because um, I was actually reading a very harrowing story of yet another case of somebody in the United Kingdom killing themselves because of the government's benefit reforms, welfare reforms, austerity. <clears throat> this, you know, is... Well, that is pretty terrible. It's more than pretty terrible. Anyway, I've restarted the computer so that the um, zip drive drivers are no longer in memory. So, I've installed a few games. So let's start with an old favourite. Obviously, I'm no good at this game, so... This is actually silky smooth. I, I am quite surprised, you know, this being a 486 and all, it is very silky smooth. Perhaps... <coughs> I reckon the um, the CPU upgrade to a DX250 has helped it. Nice. Starting to wonder, I mean, I'm playing this game, but I really. 
<clears throat> I really do... I really am starting to kind of feel uncomfortable with, um... The idea of Nazi imagery actually being portrayed in uh, my videos. I'm, I'm not sure how comfortable I am with that. In fact, um... I'm not comfortable with that at all. But then again... Nintendo did actually uh, remove a lot of the more questionable content from the game. Well, Nintendo, they didn't do it themselves, but they asked that it was removed. Um, you know, when this game was made. So, uh, but yeah. I love the sound of these guys dying now. I mean, that is just so 90s, is it not? And it's almost like, it's almost like a comic book. So, um, a very, in a very crappy way, kind of completed the level. But yeah, um, but yeah, I mean, that's a level of Wolfenstein. Um, I am extremely sorry if, uh, you know, anything portrayed in here, Hitler's uh, likeness, um, you know, the swastikas all over the place, I'm really sorry about those. <coughs> oh dear! It seems we have a Skype call. Billy, you're in a video! <laughs> well, um... <laughs> As you can tell, folks, this was not planned. Uh, but what we're doing here is actually videoing the uh, Packard Bell Legend Multimedia. Um, I've uh, played a bit of Fatty Bear, I've had to go with some Ked Picks, and I've just had to go on Wolfenstein 3D. Oh yeah, nothing like killing Nazis after playing a game of um, Fatty Bear. <laughs> <laughs> So what we're my way to do now is um, play some jazz jackrabbit. Oh, yeah. So. There we go. And we're gonna set up the gamepad, which I, you know, I've got another one connected up to the twenty-two forty. There we go. As you can see, I'm actually now controlling the game with the joypad. So let's... That's usually how I play mine. Let's get the game on. This is actually, this feels really quite weird playing with a joypad because this is the first time I've played Jazz Jackrabbit 1 with one. Used to play uh, Jazz Jackrabbit 2 with a joypad all the time on the uh, Presario 2240. Yeah, when it comes to platformer games on um, old systems, you know, like Jazz Jackrabbit, Earthworm Jim, I just prefer using a joystick like the Sidewinder 3D Pro. It does great for stuff like that. See, whereas I would have to say that a joystick is best used for uh, flight sims, and a joypad is best for used for platforms. Yeah, and the, um, I want to tell you that the, that a joystick is a must-have for um, firefight. Ah. Which, um, by the way, forecaster. <laughs> yeah, I still need to play that, but the only joystick I have is actually USB. It's a Sidewinder Pro. I think you play it on your um, Dimension 4100. I could, I guess I could. Yeah. Probably might work better on that. Could actually do with installing. Whoops! 
Hey, Pete, been uh, adjusting a few compatibility settings. You can get it to run just fine on XP. <laughs> now, Billy, why would I want to take a game from the mid-90s and run it on an XP machine? Well, I'll just say for people who have no other choice. Ah, right, okay. So, um, NT-based users, XP users, you can play Firefight. Bit of yeah. consumer advice there, uh, relayed through... Oh, my way. Vista and anything later, um, I've tried it and it does not work on those. Well, if you're gonna be getting yourself an old system, you may as well get yourself a Windows 98 one. I agree. If you can only have, like, the one system. Then again, it really depends on what you're playing, you know? I mean, it's, it's like... If it's games like this that I'm playing now, that you crave and nothing newer than a DOS or Windows 95 machine would do. Um, well, I might prefer systems or um, early Pentium machines from around 1995, mm -hmm. so that's what I collect the most of. And if you're wanting to play 80s stuff, you forget the PC entirely and get an Amiga. Which oh, I'm still I'm waiting for. <laughs> I tell you, there's there's some brilliant games out there on the Amiga, and it's like you know I've I've I played Amiga games, and and I played PC parts, and quite often the PC parts came up short. Obviously, there's a few, uh, there's a few exceptions to the rule, like you know Fire and Ice. Okay, it's it's still better on the Amiga, and the Christmas edition is available on the Amiga, uh, but not on the PC. But it's it's still there. Lemmings again. Lemmings again. By, I would... by the way, um, I hate to interrupt you, but as of right now, um, pretty soon I will no longer have a desktop because guess what just happened? Someone's bed. Yeah, and they won. Oh, nice! Congratulations. So, um, congratulations if you're watching this video. Um, you've won Billy's old desktop. Treat her well. If you're watching this but, video, uh, actually, you just won the motherboard, the CPU, the RAM. Pretty much the whole system anyway, but... Well, <laughs> yeah. i5 2600. 2400. 2400. Why did I think it was a 26? That's an i7! Yeah, and, and maybe you're thinking of Atari 2600. <laughs> maybe. Yeah. Yeah, I'm thinking of the... I got... Well, put it this way. I got the ear, right? Yeah. So let's, ooh. Jill of the Jungle. Um, I want uh, I want digital sound, yes. Um, don't want the music. Um, joystick. Center joystick and press any button. Let's um, move joystick to the upper left corner. Press button, lower right, press button, um, VGA, and I've got to be honest, um, controlling a text mode, controlling anything in text mode using a joypad is probably one of the stranger th things I've done. Right, okay. By the way, on my new Platinum one... Want to hear how um, Jill the Jungle sounds like for some reason? Go on. Cover your ears, folks. Uh, never mind. It's not doing it anymore. <laughs> oh, it's a kink that sorted itself out. These older computers do tend to have their own wee personalities. Yeah, what was happening before was the sound... Um, it would just be a, a non-stop loud screeching sound until you hard reset the machine. Well, old, like I said, old machines, they have their own personalities. Yep, and that's why we love them, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> this is frustrating. Ah! So that's Jill the Jungle. I've never played Frustrating before, but I hear it's a pretty hard game. Carlos. Yeah. 
Did I ever tell you I'm absolutely terrible at this game? Jill enters the jungle map. Oh, want me to give you a cheat code, Jay? I'm alright for the moment. Give you invincible. It will give you invincible ability. I'll take the invincible ability once I finish this video. Okay. <laughs> when I'm actually sat in front of the computer and I feel more comfortable instead of just kind of being sat off to one side of it with my tripod right in front of it. Yeah, <laughs> and plus, um, if you've seen any of my videos, I, I always feel bad about using cheat codes on camera. Yeah. I don't, in, I wouldn't in Rayman. Because, I mean, that game is just cruel. Yeah, <laughs> I agree. Fun game, but cruel. Yep, you've just recently played it, haven't you, on the 822? Yeah, and the 402, uh, and, um, of course, both is the same thing, but... Well... <laughs> That gives me a good note on which to actually quit. A note that I wouldn't have otherwise. Whoops. Um, if you're playing this game. Okay, right. I'm, all, I'm all alone out here in this building uh, by myself, so I can do whatever the heck I want. So I can do that! <laughs> James! I'm not alone in my building. It's... That's gonna... That's gonna... Yeah, I'm already... Feeling the effects of my throat now. <laughs> oh, well done, well done. Well, uh, well, guys, what we're gonna do is something that's a first on this channel. We're actually gonna play. For a hot cup of tea because he just um, screamed like an idiot. Nope. We're gonna play the Incredible Machine Two. Incredible Machine 2, um, I've actually never played that one. Version number 3 is actually my childhood, and I mean my childhood. That was pretty much one of the greatest games of my life on the A22. Well, version 2 sounds like version 3, but it you runs under DOS. DOS. Yep. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's funny. I just hit the play button on the CD-ROM drive. Now, with this CD-ROM drive, um, if you hit the play button... It'll just kind of stop everything it's doing and just work as an audio CD player. Check this out. That, that song is called Unplug. Salsa. New Age. I love that one, by the way. That's my favorite there, Hasty. I loved that when I was a kid. It made me, it was so hilarious. Shoot do up, shoot do up. <laughs> yeah, 1959 prom. <laughs> Dreams. Pictures. So yeah, as you can see, <laughs> this CD-ROM drive, it's, um, as Detox and Vicky would say, this CD-ROM drive would be burst upon its grinder. Anyway, um... <laughs> Kids, if you don't know what that means, I'm not even sure mummy and daddy would be able to explain that to you. <laughs> yeah. mm, I just got paid for the computer stuff. That's nice. So now I've just started the game. The CD audio track is quite low in DOS. Yeah. 
sure use a little light in here. This guy looks like Hey Arnold. That's much better. I know. Hi, I'm Professor Tim. Welcome oh. to the Incredible Machine 2. Oh, hey, Tim. By the way, Caesar 2 is a wee bit cr- Lol at the credits with just the one guy clapping. That's almost sarcastic. <laughs> there you go, Sierra. This, there you go, developers of this game. This is what Sierra think to the to, to you guys and your work. Your hard, long, unappreciated hours of working on this game. Sometimes right through the night, not getting to see your loved ones or friends or even take a shower or get something, get us a wee nap or something. That's it's a shame because it's a good game. And it deserves credit. <laughs> Have you heard this hand clap? It's it's actually border it's actually sarcastic now. I know it's like it's like Sierra's saying, um, yeah, 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 good work, mate. Now now it's now a school teacher's like, behave! And and so they're starting to clap a wee bit faster and now they now they're going straight back to sarcastic. Do you know what? The button that you can select, done. It's, it's completely appropriate, because I literally am done with that. <laughs> Brilliant. Now we know what Sierra Online thought of their developers. At first I thought your Packard Bell was painting like a dog. <laughs> yeah. I might actually switch the music back on. What's, what happens if I click on this computer? Ah actually um, select some options that actually matter. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back, I'm going to actually start from puzzle one because I actually know how to do it. Wait a minute. You are in for a treat. Put the three bowling balls into the wicker baskets. Okay, maybe I'm not going back to puzzle one. Before I do anything, I'm going to select the music. Yeah, do you know what? We'll have, uh, we'll have Hayseed on. Oh, uh, yeah. Which, for some reason, is only coming out of the right speaker. Right, so I'm on the teeter-totter one. So let's have a look. Now, if I'm right... And then what should happen is, um, if I was to run this game without the CD, it would just kind of use a MIDI track. Yep, and the MIDI sounds good too. Right, what I think I'm going to do is just kind of copy, just kind of copy... What's going on on the other side? I'm gonna turn this teeter totter around, or seesaw, as we call it in Scotland. Now I just love watching all Daisy dance around. <laughs> so hopefully, if I'm right, if it's not me just kind of copying, what will happen? That ball will bounce. On the edge of the seesaw, it'll actually upturn it the other way. It'll um, it's connected to the rope, so as this one goes down, so too does that one. That goes up, and the bowling balls go into the basket. Sounds simple enough. Let's see if the theory work uh, stands up. Sure. Yes, it does. Mm. You see, this was back when they uh, knew how to make a good computer game. It, it, it makes you use your brain. Oh, I could, I, I can just start it. Both of the electric mixers. I can already see myself having millions of fun with this, now that I actually know how to use it. Right. Yeah, it's a, it's a wonderful game, even if it's underappreciated by Sierra. <laughs> I don't know what I'm supposed to do here. 
start one or both of the electric mixers. Oh, I like that song playing, by the way. Oh, it is beautiful. I'm gonna have to send you the soundtrack to that game. Oh, do, please. Tell you. I, I love the soundtrack to that game so much back around 96, 97 when I was playing this on the original 822 version 3 though with the same songs but what I would do um, is I would take my handheld tape recorder and <laughs> stick it up to the um, speakers on the 822 and record the audio from the game onto a cassette tape so I could listen to it in the car. Do you know Obviously what I... Obviously it didn't sound all that nice because well... Just kind of holding up to the speaker. <laughs> yeah. The thing is, right, okay, switch on one of our more of the electric mixers. So, so, yeah, actually, no, my laundry machine sounds a lot better than that. I wonder what would happen. I don't, I don't know what's happening here, but you know, I'm just. Gonna... I will say one thing that is happening, Jay. You're making me feel very nostalgic. Start one or both of the electric mixers. I wonder. Let's see. There we go. So I like this game because it gets kids using the grey matter. Both bowling balls between the logs. You see, it, it does. It gets kids using the grey matter, and it's fun. I know. I I played the heck out of it as a kid. Okay. Just absolutely fantastic. There's a couple of things that I want to show you all before I end this video. So what I am going to do is I'm going to get out of this game because, to be honest, I want to just kind of spend like countless hours playing it. <laughs> so I'll leave that for later. So... I want to show you some information about my CPU. But wait, I don't have a CPU Z version for MS DOS. I do have another program. Mm -hmm. CHK CPU. Now, this is a very modern piece of software. In fact, it was written in 2014. And what it does is it kind of has all sorts of information about it. So it can tell me that I have a 486. DX2C step running at 50.4 megahertz, clock multiplier 2.0, 25.2 megahertz, genuine Intel, uh, blah blah blah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, if I press Control Alt and the minus button on the keypad, the machine emits a low pitched beep. Watch what happens when I run CHK CPU again. This time the writing's taken a wee bit longer and oh, the CPU slowed down. Not by much, but it has. If we have a look now, the power LED's turned orange. If I press Control, Alt and Plus, 
the machine emits a high-pitched beep, the power LED turns green, and if I run CHK CPU, it's right back at 50.4 megahertz. What I've done now is shown off the machine's turbo function, which kind of helps software run a wee bit slower. I guess it wouldn't be um, a good review if I didn't play Lemmings on this thing. So I'm going for standard computer. There we go. Now, I don't want any music, so I'll hit F3, just to have FX. Um, F4. Oh, okay. Right, so I do have, do have, do have mouse control in this game. Um, so what I want to do is I want to tunnel. Yeah, I actually want to tunnel down to the exit. There we go. Come on. Yeah. Lemming, lemmings are... I'm going to mute my mic for a second, Jenny, make a phone call. Not a problem. Lemmings are... Oh, I blimey hate that. I, I don't know the way to kind of fast forward this either, so... Yeah, that's one downside about playing this game. It, you, you've got that sound, and it's horrible. Seriously, it's awful. Right, that's that's Lennon. Um, pretty good game. And I love how it says, have a nice DOS. It's probably not going to work. Oh wow, this this is different. Seems to be a top down perspective. It's it's kinda it's kinda like RC Pro Am. I was about to say. Oh can you see it from there? No, but I'm just going by your description. Oh of course you're out in the workshop on your laptop. Yeah, well, I can I can see you, but you can't see me. I, I still can't see your screen good enough. All right, okay. Yeah, no, it is. It's a lot like kind of like RC Pro and meets the nineties. Oh, I might have to try that out. Yeah, seriously, give it a go. Obviously, get a legitimate copy with a manual. Yeah. Like this one. <laughs> Is that the copy protection working away? It's giving me my speed in kilometers.
So there doesn't seem to be reverse on this game. But kind of being lodged in that tree seems to have fixed my car and given me some fuel. And I've completely missed that spanner because I am one. And I'm guessing the spanner would have actually given me... I don't know. A wee bit of a tune-up! Mm. Yeah, some might say I took that corner a wee bit wide and in doing so seemed to have fixed the car. Maybe... Maybe it's a hippie car. Oh, that didn't work. You have cra <clears throat> You've crashed your car. But this is... Again, this looks like a fun game. Peugeot, uh, Peugeot 205 Rally, Porsche 911 RS, Ford Escort Cosi, Vauxhall Calibra, Lancia Delta, Toyota Celica. Well, I love cars from the land of the rising sun. So, uh, I guess I'm driving a Celica. But, I mean, a 911 RS on a rally stage. Really? 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 Well, yes, if you want to go home in a matchbox. So, no, I decided, um, I decided to go for a stylish coupe. But, to be honest, all those cars are legends. It's, it's kind of like... You know, you're, you're in a sweet shop and you can only choose the one thing and, and it's like, well, what do I go for? Or if you're in a game shop and your mum's like, you're, yeah, you can pick out one game for your birthday. And then it's like, which one do I go for? These are all good. Oh, oil slicks. What is this, Mario Kart? It's like, I have massive respect for the... Uh, Peugeot 205. I love the Escort Cosi. Um, I think the one that I'd probably like the least would probably be um, the uh, Calibra, but that's kind of more based on you know how I think it would perform on a rally stage. Maybe it's been a lot. None of these are stock cars, but I mean I do love the way that the Calibra looks. But, um, you know, I mean, when you're up against stuff like, you know, Elantia Delta, I think I know what copy protection, yeah. <laughs> so definitely would like to get a... There we go. Really good game. Would recommend. Um, yeah. So, I'm just going to have a wee look at, um, I would like to say as well, um, that Nickelodeon direct Director's Lab is on this computer, but unfortunately, um, well, Viacom, I don't think would like me to play that. And unfortunately, I believe the British government are actually fast-tracking plans to privatise the Butthart Ambulance, so I can't even call that out. Yeah. So, because of that, I think we'll end this video here, especially as this segment alone has gone on for about 46 minutes. So, Billy, is, is there anything that you'd like to add? Well, you got a great system there, um... Can't go wrong with a Packard Bell 486, um, especially um, from that era when they brought out the face of technology. But um, I, I myself am getting another 486 Packard Bell um, maybe as early as next week, thanks to uh, selling that um, parts for my um, desktop. I should be getting the uh, 
a mini tower 486 system. It'll be a uh, it'll look just like my 822 except a 486. And I think that is absolutely brilliant. And I think that you should actually endeavour to try and add a five and a quarter inch drive in there as soon as is humanly possible. Um, I'm actually planning to do that. I might actually take the one out of my uh, 1510 Supreme and put it in that 486. Do you know that would actually make sense? Because I think you'd be yeah. more likely to use five and a quarter inch discs in your 486 than you would on a 1510. Exactly. The only reason I've not added a drive to mine, because if I pan back to the right, as you can see, um, there's only two um, external drive bays. One is a three and a half inch drive bay for a floppy drive, and the other one is a five and a quarter inch drive bay, um, and that's populated with the CD-ROM drive, which a system uh, actually came specced up with CD-ROM. You could mm. buy these, I believe, with five and a quarter inch floppy drives in them, but um, you know, on, on this system, I believe it's more useful for me to have a CD drive. So that's exactly what I went and did. Um, Can't blame you for that. Yeah. No, I think, um, you know, and then, and then obviously I actually have, um, if I can actually pan down the way a wee bit, um, you kind of really see it there, but um, and there's a zip drive, um, which I do use with this system. Uh, for those of you wondering how do I get large files over to the Compact Perserio 2240 now, See that USB hub over there, next to that hard disk? I have the Windows 95 USB mass storage device drivers that I got from, uh, well, that Billy got from me, actually, from uh, Toasty Tech's website, Nathan Lineback. Great website. Yeah. And actually, you know, despite, you know, despite his commentary on Internet Explorer, he's actually a really decent guy. He I mean, really is. Yeah, I mean, you'd, you'd think that he probably wouldn't be the way he talks about IE, but, well, let's be honest. Who watching this video hasn't been angry with Internet Explorer? Yeah, that, <laughs> there's not much that Internet Explorer does that could be um, deemed as passable to um, human society. <laughs> <laughs> Which is why Microsoft have decided to can it and are creating Spartan instead. And I look forward this to seeing that. This is Spartan. Yep. Anyway, um, I'd like to thank you all for watching this video. I hope you have enjoyed it. If you have, please feel free to subscribe to my channel. To follow us on Facebook. And, of course, read my website. Not that it's changed much since the last video. But, um, well, thanks for watching this video anyway. And I hope you all join me. 